How you doing? And welcome to another Cigar Assessor Cigar Video Review. Today I have the distinct pleasure of sitting here with Bob from the Smoker's Castle up in Ventura County. Right, and the city of Ventura. Nice. It's a really cool shop. I'll take you, uh, I'll take you on a tour in a little bit. Uh, but I want to first start, get this lit up so we can, at least I can be smoking while I'm talking. Today I'm going to review the Villager Colorado. It's a very nice looking brown stick with minimal veins, well constructed. Uh, give it a sniff. Getting some fruit and cocoa from the foot. some sweetness from the stick. I'll give this a cut with my Calibri Slice. Very great cutter. A good cutter. <laughs> Those sold very well this past Christmas. They did? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> it's a great, it's a great yeah, I cutter. believe we gave one away at our Friday night Cigar of the Week event uh, at our Christmas party too. Getting some floral notes and sweetness from the dry draw. Let's give this a nice toast. So do you prefer, because I've been preferring the single porch to the triple. I feel the triple kind of day and age of modern technology. Excuse the interference. Um, I find uh, that this, it's actually, it becomes more of a ritual and then also you don't uh, over toast the right. cigar with, like some people get these four jets and it's like, the whole oh, right. the cigar yeah. gets all burnt. And you're apt to burn the edge of the cigar, which you don't want to do, blacken it. Yeah. Well, I prefer the single flame too. I've got, being a shop owner, I have uh, single, double, triple, but triple. But uh, the other thing is, since I smoke three to eight cigars a day, <laughs> I'm, I'm always filling my lighter if it's got more than one flame. So for the economy's sake, I prefer the single flame as well, besides the reasons you enumerated. As a shop owner, I love to sell the... Uh, Four flames because I can sell more butane that way. But, uh, <laughs> to each his own. Yeah, well, you know, in, in, in America or United States, it seems like it's always more is better, right? Which is not true. Like right. those big, uh, this guy was in this one shop and this guy uh, was buying one of those asylum, like 60 something ring gauge by. Right, right. 70 ring gauge. Yeah, 70. And, he, yeah. and his. his his excuse for smoking this cigar was, I'm getting my money's worth. Yeah, yeah. And I said, if you're doing little cigars, you're not getting your money's worth. It, yeah, it's <laughs> funny. I find a lot of my younger customers prefer the larger rig gauge. And maybe it's just because they're coming into their manhood and it makes them feel <laughs> more vigorous. Uh, you know, when I first started smoking cigars about 40 years ago, I like the bigger cigars, but I've noticed since I've owned a shop and I'm smoking more admittedly as a shop owner than I did already owning the shop, I've been uh, gravitating to a narrower ring gauge. In fact, some cigars, and I know you know this, uh, the same blend will taste different due to the shape and the size of the cigar, and there are certain cigars that come to mind right now, the uh, La Flor Dominicana, uh, 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 my mind, I turn 65 next month, so I'm not remembering. Uh, anyway, it's the LaFord Dominican, I know that. Uh, oh, the Airbender. I actually prefer the Lancero much better than the larger ring gauge. I, I just taste a difference in the flavor. And of course, with the smaller ring gauge, you're getting more of the flavor from the wrapper yep. than the filler and the binder. But uh, that's what that's what I learned is that there's more wrapper and binder in the Lucero yeah. or the or the Robusta and smaller cigars than the thicker ones. Right. And that's why the flavor for me is a lot nicer. Of course, now I'm I'm smoking a I don't know this might be a, a 50 ring gauge I'm not sure it's 4850 it's a Padron number no. two Maduro. Getting a strong cedar flavor from this. 
which is like most cigars. To you newbies out there, you'll you'll get some hints, and usually the most one that I hear from new cigar smokers is pepper or spice. Of course, I'm not a blogger. I just uh, I'm a cigar smoker and a shop owner, and I enjoy my. I don't necessarily taste all those nuances of chocolate and grapes and, <laughs> and leather. It's like, no, I have tasted nuts and a little hint of uh, it may taste like coffee to my palate. Yeah, do those, but uh, I can't sit here and do the job this man's doing. And of course, that's why he gets paid the big bucks to do yep. to review cigars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I only go pay the big bucks, I'd have a better camera. <laughs> yeah. We both had lavaliers, we'd have a boom above us with some lighting guys. Yes. Yeah. Robert and I were talking before we started this video uh, about me buying this shop. Uh, I lost a wife to breast cancer about nine years ago who wasn't very tolerant of my cigar smoking because uh, she had cigarette smokers in her family and who developed lung cancer so you could understand her intolerance. But, all my smoking was on the patio or here at Smoker's Castle with uh, the three previous owners. I'm the fourth owner. The shop was started here at this location in Ventura in 1971. I purchased the place, uh, well, January of this month was my seventh year of ownership, so I'm into my eighth year now. But uh, after my wife died a couple years later, I remarried. The woman. I remarried is a little more tolerant of my cigar smoking and uh, after a date we'd go to my cigar room at my home, we'd be chatting and uh, I'd be smoking a cigar, she never said anything. Then she became Mrs. Bob Grekerchuk and one Sunday she was in the living room reading and I was in my cigar room reading I lit up the cigar and all of a sudden I heard from the living room, I smell a cigar. Well. That became her golden retriever's room, and I had to buy the shop, which I did actually about two months after we were married. I wanted an indoor habitat to smoke. <laughs> and uh, Smoker's Castle is well named because uh, there was a day when a man's home was his castle. Well, fellas, not with the queen around. <laughs> so I bought Smoker's Castle, which was already named that, and I tell folks that uh, come on down. My castle is your castle. My castle is your two castle. <laughs> I, you know, I, I was talking to my wife and she said, uh, I said, you know, one day I'd like to open my own shop. And she said, yeah, just that's exactly what you would do. She said, I'd never see you. Yeah. She said, first of all, I'm a workaholic. Secondly, I'd be in the shop all the time. Yeah. And she, you know, and she used to smoke cigars with me for a little while and she uh -huh. kind of, Kind of wore off from her where it didn't wear right, off from right. me, and uh, so I know a little bit of what you, yeah. just you know, and it's a lot. I guess I was saying earlier, a lot of guys I know who, who wife make them take the clothes off before they come in. Yeah, I said that, uh, that's ridiculous. Well, that was my late wife. I have to air my shirts out out on the patio, <laughs> take a shower, and. Uh, Anyway, uh, so it's nice to have this shop where fellows can come in and smoke. We do get ladies in here Friday nights uh, at Smoker's Castle. We have an event called Cigar of the Week. We've been doing that for the last two years. From 5 to 8 p.m., we feature a different cigar every Friday night, and everybody gets their first uh, cigar of the week at a discount price, plus the entire shop then goes on sale. Any cigar of the purchaser's uh, choice. They buy three to get the fourth one free. Likewise, only and during the party time, they can buy a box of cigars for 25% off. So that's our little bit to compete with uh, you guys buying cigars out there on the internet. Uh, so we do have a lot of customers who take advantage of that 25% uh, discount on Friday nights here. But you know, like like you were saying earlier about having needing a place to smoke, you can buy your cigars and get and save two dollars a stick or three dollars or one dollar a stick on the internet, and that's fine. But this you cannot replace coming into a, a cigar place like this and having the camaraderie of other smokers. Right. So for people that are really like penny wise, dollar foolish, if you don't support guys like this, 
then you're not going to have anywhere to smoke. Amen. Right? So spend the extra couple dollars, support Bob in his, his shop, and he's got, he's got uh, soft drinks and, and waters and uh, he's got pipes. He's got a lot of stuff here that, you know, you, you I mean, buy, support the local business guy, the brick and mortar, so that you'll have a place to go, especially in California, the way that they're trying to eliminate all of uh, the smoking, and pretty soon they won't let you smoke in a cigar shop, which is another foolish move by the anti-smoking bandits, which just disgusts me. Right. Uh, Robert and I were talking earlier, this last year both of us were in England, and I was mentioning how, what a shame, the homeland of Sir Winston Churchill the rules there against smoking are as bad as here in California. Yep. Uh, you can still smoke in a few of the cigar shops, but uh, I was at a hotel the last night. I was in London. Beautiful patio upstairs with uh, covered canopy. I thought, oh, what a great place I'm going to go smoke after dinner. I went up there. They had rocks on the table where an ashtray <laughs> would be, and engraved in the stone said, this is not an ashtray, and there's no smoking allowed on the outdoor patio. And you had to walk down the driveway about uh, 30 to 40 feet from the entrance of the hotel where they had a skinny little ashtray, and that was the smoking area. But, uh, and let me ask you, because you've been doing this well, have you ever read anywhere or uh, had any proof that secondhand smoke has hurt somebody? Or killed them. Now, being a shop owner, I've become an expert on a lot of this, uh, a lot of these questions because I hear it in the conversation, and I have uh, some doctors who come in here. That's the nice thing about the camaraderie that Robert mentioned earlier. You've got uh, construction workers, you've got retired people, doctors, lawyers, and the common denominator is the cigar, where everybody gets along, even after the. Uh, presidential election six years ago. We'd have liberals, flaming liberals, conservatives, middle ground, uh, you name it. But there was no demeaning uh, personage. Uh, people would have their opinions. It's like the, the old saying, uh, opinions are like some part of our anatomy. Everybody's got one. But the guys got along. They shared their own opinion. They disagreed, but they did it as gentlemen and ladies. Uh, and, uh, that's one of the, the nice things about a cigar shop, where it brings people together from all walks of life and different viewpoints. And, uh, but they enjoy the company. And a lot of the guys that I just uh, mentioned now gather in their homes and they have barbecues here in Southern California. And people who normally wouldn't mix I'm mixing and having a great time. Yep. I, I, it's the last vestige, is it, I don't know if that's a vestige of a, of a man who can hang out. It yeah. would be vestige. Because uh, there, is, there is no place anymore. I mean, you, can't, you can't smoke in a park. You can't smoke in a lot of, like Santa Monica. You can't smoke in Santa Monica. You can't smoke in Calabasas. So where do guys hang out and want to just have a nice cigar and relax? I mean, brings my blood pressure down. I'm not right now I'm worrying about nothing but smoking a cigar and hanging out and just learning. Learning from uh, the sage ring. Yeah. Vice versa. <laughs> it's like the good book said. As iron sharpeneth iron, so does one man's countenance sharper in another. And that's what you get in the camaraderie. Guys with different viewpoints discussing things that concern us all and uh, and we're all enriched by that. Mm -hmm. I, I realized just now, I didn't answer your question about secondhand smoke, but uh, <laughs> I, I got off, which I always do, and sort of wander off the subject matter. But no, the discussion about secondhand smoke has been brought up here a number of times. And uh, uh, what I understand from people who are more knowledgeable than me that there isn't really any hard factual data on that. Nope. I haven't found it. I've been searching the internet. It's sort of like the controversy with global warming. Warming. Everybody's got an opinion about that. And, uh, well, and they think, still they still all jump in their car and they get on the jets 
it, you know, th that thing with me is if you really feel that there's global warming going on, then don't drive your car all the time. Walk. Take public transportation. If that's if you feel that strongly about it, but it's always like this. This is a problem. Uh, let him take care of it. You know, let him stop doing what he likes to do because I'm not going to be inconvenienced. Right. right. Correct. Yeah. I'm getting. I know we were talking about pepper earlier. That's, that's all I'm getting in this cigar right now. Is pepper. The burn is really nice. The ash is nice, but no, not a lot of flavor. Um. Yet. So. Did you have more flavor at the beginning of the cigar? There was a cedar, and then it got really peppery. And the smells, I mean, it had a lot of, like, I was excited because I smelled, you know, fruit. And, you know, but nothing, yeah, sometimes it takes a half a cigar. Right. I probably sell more uh, villager pipe tobacco here at Smoker's Castle than I do the, the cigars, quite frankly. Because the uh, villager, which is the European company, I don't know how many years they've been providing quality pipe tobacco. Well, uh, we're going to take a break. I want to take some pictures of this ash, and then we'll be back with some more interesting conversation and flavor notes and burn notes, smoke notes. The smoke is, it's a nice full smoke, not creamy, but we'll be back in a few seconds. And he's going to take pictures of his ash, not mine. <laughs> Nice even burn. The ash fell when I put it down in the uh, ashtray. The ash is nice, but it's very bitter. I'm getting, um, I got, went from pepper, cedar pepper to bitterness. So I'm going to take this first band off, see if uh, it sticks. Oh, let me get this first. And it's came right off. The second band slides right off. And there's no cracks, defects, glue underneath. Yeah, it's the, the retro hail, it's like very bitter. I don't know if I'm gonna smoke the rest of this. So you know that means it's not getting a cigar assessor approved cigar. Right. So I just took my band off. Some people have asked me, Bob, how long do you smoke the cigar? I mean, uh, how short do you smoke it? Well, I tell people, if you have to relight it and it burns your nose, it's time to get a new cigar. I've done that before. <laughs> well, they guys were calling me Rudolph the Red Nose uh, Tobacconist because I once lit a short cigar and it uh, got the nip of my nose there. Well, I want to put this down, and uh, I can't recommend it. Uh, it could be just one thing. I don't know. But it was nice. But the good thing about this is sitting here with Bob and talking. I mean, that, that makes the cigar taste better. So if I was by myself, it might not take, even taste that good. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the company you keep. <laughs> exactly. And we uh, we used the Calibri clips to light it, and the Calibri slice to cut it. Very nice cutter, lighter. Um, you can check the written review at CigarAssessor.com. Uh, go to my Facebook, facebook.com slash CigarAssessor1 or CigarAssessor. And send me a tweet at Twitter slash CigarAssessor. If you ever get a chance to come up here to... You, you said the name was uh, the original name of this county. Well, it's Ventura County. The city of Ventura, which the legal name is the city of San Buenaventura. And we've shortened it and go by Ventura, is the county seat. In Ventura County, you have uh, Thousand Oaks, part of Westlake Village is in Los Angeles, parts in Ventura County, Simi Valley, Oxnard, Ojai, Moore Park, Solness, Santa Paula, Fillmore. We're just uh, the county uh, uh, west of Los Angeles County wedged in between Los Angeles and Santa Barbara counties. Oh, 
It's on, you're on Main Street too, right? Main Street. You get off the Ventura Highway, like the song says, Highway 101 at Seaward Off Ramp. Go north on Seaward, whether you're coming from Los Angeles or down the coast from Santa Barbara. Get off at Seaward. Go north on Seaward to Main Street, turn left, and we're at 1824 East Main Street, Smoker's Castle. Come to your hours. We're open, currently we're open Monday through Saturday, noon till 6 p.m., Friday nights till 8 p.m. And we do have private parties here. Uh, we've had uh, some smokers, some tastings, and uh, you can have bachelor or bachelorette parties here. Uh, Sunday's a good day or after hours, weekdays. And the lounge is a cigar assessor approved lounge. Yes. <laughs> We've got two flat screen TVs and uh, a number of the customers here rent uh, our humidor lockers to store not cigars, but their liquor. We don't like out cigars, outside cigars in our humidors because sometimes they carry bugs and we don't want them to get on the house. Uh, plus we're a cigar shop. We've got all the cigars and they smoke the meats here. That's right. Great selection. If you can't find something in this humidor, you're not a true cigar aficionado. Right. He said it. <laughs> Well, until uh, my next review, thank you for my, your support. Thank you for watching. This has been a pleasure. And um, I will talk to you soon. Adios. Thank you for visiting. Thank you. I'm glad I popped in here. And I will be back when I'm in this area.